This is Chemistry 12, Part 2 of an Introduction to Electrolytic Cells. Uh, in a, the previous introduction, we discovered what uh, species were actually going to react in our electrolytic cell. Uh, the ions still provide a flow of electricity through the solution, exactly as they did in electrochemical cells. Uh, cations still will flow towards cathodes, and ion anions will still flow towards anodes. So the negative ions will flow to the anode, and the positive ions will flow to the cathode. Electrons will still move from anode to cathode. So this demonstrates the electron, electron movement. As well, we already listed all the species and used the table to predict the most easily reduced and the one uh, most oxidized. And the formula requiring the smallest vo voltage was the one involving iodine and water. So we have these two reactions. So this is our oxidation. If this is our oxidation occurring at the anode, then we would predict that these pieces growing on it is iodine. Uh, at the other, at the cathode, this reaction, which is a gain of electrons, so this is a reduction, our gas is hydrogen gas bubbling off. Uh, the cathode is negative in electrolytic cells, that's uh, different from electrochemical, and that's because electrons are being forced in to force this reaction to occur. The E naught for the entire cell is then the reduction, uh, the reduction, which is negative 0 0.41 minus 0 0.54 for the oxidation, these two numbers, which is equal. 0 0.95 negative volts, so almost an entire volt. Uh, the overall cell reaction, uh, as well as the cell voltage, in this case, uh, both have two electrons, and so we don't need to worry about any special balancing here. It looks like it all works out. So in terms of reactants, we have H2O plus 2I minus goes to I2 solid plus H2 plus 2OH. This type of reaction is sometimes known as a type 2 reaction. A type 2 reaction is one that occurs in aqueous solutions. Type 2 reactions uh, have a few tricks to them, as we just saw. Uh, one is that water can react. So on your table of standard reductions, these two reactions have to be watched out for. One in which water at uh, 10 to the minus 7 molar goes to oxygen gas, and one in which water goes to hydrogen gas. In neutral solution, both of these reactions are possible, and you need to watch out to make sure that they are not, in fact, the strongest agent available. In acidic solution, we have these two reactions. Uh, so H plus can react to become H2, and H2O can react again to become oxygen, uh, oxygen gas. So this oxidation, or this reduction, are the reactions to watch out for an acidic solution. And then, of course, these in neutral solution. There's nothing special that you need to worry about in terms of basic solutions. Now, another type of electrolytic cell is known as a type 1 electrolytic cell. This one's a little easier in that there's no irritating water reactions to worry about, in that the electrolyte is usually molten, and it's a molten binary salt, so it'll take place, for example, sodium chloride at 800 degrees Celsius. There's no other species in molten NaCl other than Na plus and Cl minus. Well, this reduces the number of possible reactions dramatically. So using a table of standard reductions, we can see that the only two reactions possible are the chlorine reaction here and the sodium uh, reaction here. So chloride will become chlorine gas, and uh, the sodium ion will become solid sodium. 
Uh, your table, of course, is much larger than this one, but there are no other possible reactions. Now we can place those at our anode and our cathode. Now we've been given a DC power source and the charges have already been labeled. Uh, so with the charges already labeled, uh, we can say that uh, the electrons flow from anode to cathode. The electrons will also flow out of the negative if it's being pumped in and towards and sucked into the positive. Um, that means that the anode will be here and the cathode will be here, which means that we should see bubbles of chlorine gas coming off of this reaction and that we should see this getting coated in sodium over time and these are our two reactions. Uh, sodium should flow towards the cathode and chlorine, the anion, should flow towards the anode. Um, and that is the entire electrolytic cell. Uh, the type 1 cell, as we can see, there's no side reactions we have to worry about. There's no possibility of reaction with water. It's just simply what you have present. Uh, inert electrodes can be something like, for example, uh, carbon rods. To sum up, uh, establish all pre species present. Uh, so if you're dealing with a type 2 cell that's aqueous, worry about things like how acidic is it, uh, is there water, what kind of reactions could happen with water, determine the conditions. Once you've done that, determine the smallest voltage need, needed, and then determine the overall reactions. Homework is given. Page 242, questions number 65 to 72. That is the end of the, end of the intro to electrolytic cells. Uh, the next part three will have a practical problem in electroplating to use some of this knowledge. <music>